So I'll see if I can keep the camera on so we can um, show you how we do storm desensitization. <laughs> yep. Oh, there it is. Cookies. Actually, that's Norman's room. That's where Norman's crate lives, right? In a humongous... <laughs> Like right down my, that was a big old German Shepherd French kiss. Ugh. So we're gonna fix this, whoops, sorry, with some duct tape. And I'm shooting up here also um, for my YouTube channel. So we are going to fix this situation, leave it. He's been pulling the guts out. So, so we are going to fix this situation. Leave, no, back, 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 back. no. Oh boy, stay. I know, you're very, very cheeky. So one of my big towel folding, laundry folding, folding tips is to fold your towels based on where you are storing your items. So let me show you where we store ours. I know this is... Again, another dark and stormy day here in August in South, or in, uh, not South Carolina, North Carolina. So this is where we store, we need to empty the trash there. This is where we store our towels. So as you can see, it is a very narrow, it's a very narrow cupboard. And what I did was have my husband build out this shelf, which is U-shaped shelf, so that we had little shelflets on either side and trash in the middle. And then we had a place in the back to store the towels. And I had him build it out that it would be deep enough, but not so deep, that it would store the towels really well. And then 
even though we have these braces here for shelves, we left this shelf back by itself without a shelflet, but then we did shelflet, shelflet, U-shaped scenario here, and then shelf back very, very shallow with a stair step. And then this one is very, very deep because we put things in the back that we just will never, almost ever use. So I fold my towels so that they look, they will um, store perfectly and I can just grab them out of the cupboard. So that is why, oh, I have a, I have a lovely mask on today, so I'm extremely glowy and shiny. So this is what, basically what I do is I fold my towels in half like this, very simple, then fold them in half again. So this is what I have. And then I fold them in small quarters. I guess they actually are quarters because I do four folds. So I do about a four inch fold here, and then I don't roll it, I fold it. Press it down, fold it again, rather loosely here this time so that I can have it match down the side. And then I end up with this sort of USB looking fold, and then I stack like this and then I just put them all on the shelf like that. So that is why it might look like I'm sort of wadding up my towels but I'm really not wadding them up, I'm not rolling them up, I'm not doing like that kind of folding. <laughs> um, I'm folding them strategically so that they can go into the teeny tiny bathroom cupboard that we have. New nickname, what do you think? You wanna tell the people what you think about your new nickname? I know, look, look. Tell the people what you think about your new nickname. Is there no cookies up there? Oh, did I see cookies? This house is 30, uh, 31 years old, I think, something like that. It was built in the 80s, so there's absolutely no storage and a gigantic, enormous, humongously huge dining room, which we never use. Actually, that's Norman's room. That's where Norman's crate lives, right? In a humongous... <laughs> like, right down my... That was a big old German Shepherd French kiss. Ugh. So come on with me and we will put, <laughs> Mormon's always underfoot. We will put the Let's see. I think that's pretty good. Because I use them 
and let them dry and then put them in the wash um, so that I have a clean washcloth to do my cleansing every day. So there's that. And that goes right on the side. And then these just slot, just slot right in. And what I do is I do the left and right up against the, the wall of the closet. You see I've got one, two, three stacks of towels on the left and right of the cupboard. And in the middle, I've got this one and it just slots right in there. Whoops, <laughs> naturally. I had you all cattywampus. And then the final one, there are obviously some that are in circulation that we are using right now. But the final one, gracious, you don't want to cooperate, do you? Okay, well, the final one will just go right in here. And then over here on these little kind of shelflets, these are where we have the hand towels folded in the same way. And then right in the center is the trash can. And as I said, my husband, I had my husband cut that for the dimensions of a typical um, trash can. So there it is in all its glory. Oop. Trying to give you the best possible view there. <laughs> and the bottom um, hook is for my, my uh, multi-fiber hair drying towel wrap. I need a new one of those. And then the top hook is for bathrobe. This is my summer robe. You really can't wear a terry cloth robe in the south in the summertime. Um, this um, laundry basket is my new favorite home item. It is super huge and it was a little bit pricey, but I kind of all right, my hair just got off the treadmill. Um, you get what you pay for is the point I want to make there. Um, and so this is my new favorite laundry basket. The one drawback with this, just FYI, I'm going to link it below, but um, if you decide to get one, just remember it's, it's big and it's actual wicker. It's not plastic, thank heavens. Um, so it is a little bit heavy. So you just want to make sure that you are able to lift. I would say this is probably five, five, six, seven, eight pounds. So if you love this, I will link it below, but um, just make sure you'll be able to lift it. Okay, so something I wish I had been able to capture. I just got this emergency alert. I think everybody gets them on their um, cell phones, but I wanted to, along with that came a tone that was very um, attention getting <laughs> and it got Norman's attention. Here he is right Mm -hmm. Norman, where's your piece? Where's your, <laughs> he's, I swear he's right here. Anyway, this camera. Um, he looked up at me and looked for me to react. And frankly, it did startle me because I was just sitting here editing some video. Um, and so it sort of startled me, but again, you learn how to not react to stuff. Um, so I just didn't react. He kept looking, he kept looking. I even sort of made this kind of sleepy face 
and um, yawned and he looked away. So just to show him that this noise is nothing to worry about. So um, those are, are some tips and tricks that I'm using to desensitize him to storms. Also the alert that comes with a storm. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I had had the phone, the camera on when that came off because it really did startle me. <laughs> I really had a hard time like not reacting to, geez, that's really loud. <laughs> but these are his cookies. They're not actual cookies or he'd be really overweight. And I don't know if you just heard him bark. That's what he does when there is a sudden sound whether it's a dog barking or um, a small arm fire. We have a person near us that shoots on Sunday nights. Ugh. And um, he will bark at that. Thunder, cracks of thunder especially. Rolling thunder doesn't bother him, but the cracking close thunder and lightning bother him. So I take these little, little, little wee pieces of baby carrot and every time he starts to be afraid I'll say to him Norman cookies watch Norman cookies you can hear him coming oh boy so we sit yeah so we get very excited we get very very excited when the thunder roll well the thunder claps <laughs> it's more like a thunder clap and we do look so he's making eye contact with me so that i put the cookie right here look and then just kind of block the cookie from him taking my whole hand i bring it in like this so he's somewhat blocked and then that way he doesn't take a huge, it's a way to sort of um, train him to approach the cookie slowly. And again, as I said, instead of using treats like dog treats, which are really high in calories, um, I use things like baby carrots and peas and um, vegetables and some fruits. Um, never, never pecans, grapes, raisins. Um, those are actually toxic for dogs, but pretty much everything else. So I would, I might just keep the camera on for when there is a big clap of thunder. We have a huge line of big storms that are rolling through. I don't know. Let's see. It's, this is how dark it is. Did you hear that? Now, I love, personally, I love, love, love uh, a hot day that's, hear it? That's followed by um, a really ferocious thunderstorm because A, it cools it down and B, it's, it's soothing to me. It's what we do in the South. It's what it's the weather we have in the South. In the summertime, it's very hot. The heat bubbles up into the atmosphere and it creates energy and then the energy forms um, storms. And it's just very Southern. It's very um, reassuring. So I'll see if I can keep the camera on so we can um, show you how we do storm desensitization. Yep. Oh, there it is. Cookies. Want a cookie? Mommy got cookies. Look. Look. That's how we do it. <laughs> you take a baby carrot and you just bite it in a couple of pieces. And then Norman, come, come. Come right here. Sit. And that hand up, that's, and you saw that, that is an indication that a lightning strike has happened nearby 
And so I'm going to be ready to have him look at me for instruction. That's what that look command is for. And we should have a clap of thunder here shortly. It's rolling outside right now. I'm going to go ahead and reward him for him just being so patient and not there. You heard some of that. That probably went along with that lightning that struck just, just then. So this is the, <laughs> this is the second by second, minute by minute that dog training is. It's taking every opportunity that is given to you like bad weather. Most people would think bad weather. I, I love this weather. Um, and we'll see what he does if he comes to me for Norman, come, come, cookies, cookies. Look, again, that bark was, he was surprised. What was that? What was that noise? He was surprised. So I called him to me calmly. Also move very slowly when the weather's bad. Eat, watch TV, put headphones on. The idea is to show them that you are not bothered by this weather. You are not threatened by it. It's not a predator. It's not a threat. It's almost something to be enjoyed. And since I enjoy it so much, it's easy for me to do. If you're afraid of this weather, it will be hard for you, but it might be good for you. Norman, look. Norman, look, look. Come, come, cookies. Look. And I make him wait longer and longer each time so he develops the patience. And I'm going to reward that. Remember, I'm blocking. Whoop! He knocked it out of my hand. There it is. Go ahead and get it. It's okay. Oh boy. Can't tell if the camera is. <laughs> there, there we go. I don't know if y'all can hear the the rain outside. I mean, to me, it's just so soothing. It just like almost like a lullaby. It's just the reassurance that the the oppressive heat will be swept away by the storm. It just just love it. I just love it. Okay. So that is some dog thunderstorm desensitization tools that I have used with my dogs. I only had one dog that it didn't work with. And that was a dog that we rescued from um, Europe who was, uh, had lived about five years on the streets and had developed some really significant fears from really awful treatment he received there. Um, I think it was, Gre it was Greece. He has a Greek, he had a Greek passport. <laughs> um, but we got, we got pretty far with him. It just takes a little bit of work. Each time there's an opportunity. Opportunity, a little bit of work, behavior gets better, and you just go on with your life. All right. Okay, so I just wanted to show you this napping puppy in the middle of a thunderstorm. He's doing much, much, much better. He's still not as bomb proof as Ren was, but Norman is a more playful, a higher energy dog in his personality. Rin was, even when he was younger than this age, Rin was really um, a very sort of low medium energy dog and he would rather have a belly rub than play. That was just how he was. <laughs> but Norman has a higher energy so he's, if he hears something or feels something, He's up to find out what it is. Um, he's just a very um, active and playful dog. Um, and that's 
just his personality. He'll probably be like that when he's 10 years old. <laughs> but this is really good for Norman to be sleeping very peacefully through a storm. So I'm real happy with the work he's done this weekend. So we are going to fix this situation, leave it. He's been pulling the guts out. So, so we are going to fix this situation. Leave. No, back, back, back. back. No. Good boy. Stay. I know you're very, very cheeky. So we're going to fix this. Whoops. Sorry. With some duct tape. And I'm shooting up here also um, for my YouTube channel. And I mean, look, y'all, like he proper ate a big chunk of that, that right there. I can't sew that back, back. I can't, I can't sew that, so no, back. Here you go. So we have Okay, so the dog bed is back in its place. I'm gonna unwind you from the back of this chair where I put you. The dog bed has been taped up as you saw and it's back in its place. And of course, he goes right back to attacking it. Leave it. Okay, today is the first day of classes here on main campus. Um, I have a lot of thoughts and I will just keep them to myself. But my suspicion is that we will go back to um, virtual class probably by Labor Day. And I am vaccinated by the way, I got vaccinated in March as soon as I was called up by my doctor's office and said, there's a vaccine for you. I went, I think it was March 3rd. <laughs> and then I got my second shot like March 20th or something like that. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just wanted to check in with you for the vlog for today since I generally don't check in with you from my office, my um, on-campus office. So I'm just gonna put you over here and I have some meetings, so I'm just gonna put you into kind of fast forward while I do a little bit of work. Okay.
Good morning. This week has been very varied, hasn't it? From stormproofing Norman to laundry to work on site. Many of you have only gotten to know me while I was mostly working from home, but it occurred to me, here's a door. It occurred to me that some of you, especially those of you abroad, outside the United States or even inside the United States, might wanna see a university campus that might be interesting to you because if it was me, let's see, yeah, if it was me, I would wanna see a university campus from another country like the UK or Germany or the Nordic States or Asia or anywhere. So this is NC State University. This is one of our buildings, dark hallway, because it's 6.30 in the morning. This is my on-campus office. And again, let me know in the comments below. We can have our masks off. It was, as they say in the UK, it was coming down buckets. <laughs> um, so I had my hair tied up. Let's shake it out, shall we? Oh yeah, that's much better. <laughs> um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in more content from this campus. I could certainly take you with me across campus and, and show you that. So just let me know if you're interested in more on-campus content. Okay. 